Right, hello and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Not sure why it's asking me the time again, but uh, we'll oblige. It's just around evening time now. Uh, let's see. Uh, there. Wait, did that say AM or PM? A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave it 12 and call it a day. <laughs> You're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's fine. Know that you care about this experience, and you're paying attention. Oh, thank you. I don't even have any of any way of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've be, been so cooperative, next time you see this screen, just set the clock to your favourite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time. You've earned it. <laughs> Straight in, eh? Begin the game. The Stanley Parable 2. Definitely not the Ultra Deluxe, we're playing the sequel now. Because if you advance far enough this into the, the game, you unlock Stanley. the sequel. Stanley worked for a company in a big building. Oh my where god, he was it's. Yep, it's got all the employee extra bits still. The balloons are there. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-wrecking, Stanley relished every moment of the orders he made, as though he had been made exactly Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that go. would forever change We're going Stanley. back in. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, Get well someday, or say, whoever you are. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. I've got an achievement. Welcome back. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Any of these computers say no awaiting him? No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't the find buttons. a trace of his co-workers. Figuring finders and finders committee meeting today in the meeting room. Be my Valentine. Okay. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. <laughs> and here we are again. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. <coughs> and here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. <laughs> Stanley took the okay. door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Let's no, see, said the bucket. 
Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley <laughs> chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again yeah, obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the... This oh. is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, <laughs> very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Uh-oh. It's me, your bucket. Press B to take me to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. <laughs> Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. <laughs> oh, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. <laughs> All it would ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. No. That's it. I love the it bucket. It doesn't do anything My else. bucket. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> you see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from, me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket, this stupid hunk of metal. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know if we can actually, like, not press that. Like, if I press other buttons, nothing happens, so... That doesn't look to be an exit. <coughs> Sad. I suppose he doesn't need so I guess we're just doing what the bucket now says. On, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, bucket person empty now. bucket. This sort of shiny bucket. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice <laughs> shine to it. It does have a nice shine to it. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection, but it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdy. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. <laughs> you have to stay with me over and over and over. Oh my saying better at carrying water from room to room it's a bucket it's literally just a bucket <laughs> why do i feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket oh no i'm i'm having feelings for the bucket no 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 no, no. what's going on why do i want to be with the bucket Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this no, would it's be my less bucket. confusing. Yes. My bucket The bucket now. could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Right, we've fought him for the bucket now. <laughs> Twice. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. What other weird stuff can we do with the bucket? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Hmm. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. What if we go, go somewhere else? Down this the cargo way. lift. Yeah, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way we to the top. Down there There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, uh -oh. of course, but Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. The story of Stanley and the bucket continues. What could it mean? Stanley right. decided to go to the but I'm going to try and get Perhaps over there. Stanley picked up the bucket and so over onto that platform and see if again, we can true. figure out what happens not if you go that way with the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. We'll just had see the what the bucket can do on each correct. path, I guess. No. And then when we're done, I'll just... Bucket was wrong. I guess we'll finally throw Stanley it into the bucket the destroyer. To go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Hmm. Don't Thanks. go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious right. fact. Um, he was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Except we didn't do what the bucket asked. We're over here now. <laughs> no, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, <laughs> no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. <laughs> now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simple enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Okay. Item one. Is this a bucket? No. Correct. It is a hologram of a bucket, not an actual bucket. <laughs> Damn. Item two. Is this a bucket? Okay, let's see if we're right. Incorrect. It is a 3D printed recreation of a bucket, not an actual bucket. <laughs> okay. Item 3. Is this a bucket? Let's say no this time. Damn. Incorrect. This is a bucket. Which means the <laughs> item four. Is this a bucket? <laughs> yes. What? Are 
you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. I thought this was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. <laughs> is this a bucket? What? This is a bucket. What? What? Huh? Item six. Is this a bucket? Trick what? question. Both. Gotcha. What? Now he's just making this up. <laughs> Item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Sure. Okay, you and I both know there isn't <laughs> anything here, and I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something, <laughs> and therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? What? No? Maybe? I'm confused. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. <laughs> what is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. <laughs> Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. <laughs> I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry, but I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. Okay, here we go. No. Not my bucket. What Is everything gone? Oh, wait a minute. If everything anything and everything could be a bucket. Was everything a bucket? <laughs> Every single thing in the game was a bucket. <laughs> oh my god, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue, but it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what, I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? <laughs> and we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. Oh God, is there going to just be buckets everywhere now? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Nearby fireplace. A private but smelly place for an important person. Somewhere red and blue. Ah, the red and blue doors. Stairs. Something to do with stairs. A large room, lots of boxes. How do I get to those endings? I know two of those, I think. How can you tell who's... All the clues provided by employee 416. <coughs> Maybe we are the collectibles. <laughs> Source of levitation. <laughs> okay. Useful information, actually. Trust the completionist instinct. Weird spinning figurines. <laughs> what do we know? <laughs> Have to synergize. Oh my god. Okay, right, so that's changed. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. 
Hmm. Oh. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines. And now I'm torn between Stanlerines and figures. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Hmm. But Stanley just couldn't do it. Can I think of a different name? He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting <laughs> he had left his post during work hours. He might be found for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. <laughs> the bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Oh, someone no. else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience <laughs> without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. <laughs> and indeed, now he noticed the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. He's just now realized that the rooms are... Uh, oh. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's <laughs> me! The bucket! <laughs> Could it truly be? Oh no. He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley. Find me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. Dun, dun, dun. Incredibly painful. Oh no. Stanley doubled over in agony. Stanley's a bucket as well. Now only the narrator will be in the game. No. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Do I have she a bucket on my head? Got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular <laughs> day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. <laughs> of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> backflipped all the way to work with a bucket and a handbag. <laughs> Good lord. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. Stanley just <laughs> smiled. <laughs> Anywhere they went together, would Stanley clutch the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Oh my god. He's doing voices for the bucket. Well, he's been doing voice. He keeps switching up the voices of the bucket as well. So we've got one left. Oh no, we've two left. Large room with boxes somewhere both red and blue. <clears throat> I think I know where the red and blue is. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket I walked think. upstairs to the boss's office. Oh. 
This is new. Up or down? Come on, bucket. Let's let's slow dance on the way. Dance with the bucket. Business strategy. <laughs> so does this just not go anywhere? Is it literally fake? I think it is, you know. Weird. Hmm. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if Aww. not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket <laughs> did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. I think I've nearly memorised that at this point. I was just wondering what came in the third, uh, what Stanley came in third as the digits. By yeah. sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Let's see what else we can do with the bucket then before we uh, head off uh, and call it there for the episode. Um, so. <coughs> So, we've got the bucket grinder to use, I guess. I'm trying the to think where we've not dumb, been now with the bucket. Plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be alright. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. But we're not going to go that way this Although time, we're going to go to this had the escape. Word escape written on it, <coughs> the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. <laughs> the door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. We're getting out of At here, Bucket. Point, it's me and you. And the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. <laughs> Don't worry, Bucket. You'll protect me. I'll put you on my head. 
It'll be fine. Uh oh. He may have been correct. machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their uh -oh. demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. <laughs> to be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a uh -oh. bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Uh... Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous <laughs> metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Oh. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. <coughs> it's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one <laughs> stood above the rest. <laughs> it was a glorious bucket to behold. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket ex itself, the human mind is frequently empty within. Cavernous void, but through use of this ex of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched and sustained. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. You'll, will you take what you have learnt? Uh, will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you ask, uh, accept with an open mind what may be the, uh, challenging about the information in this exhibit? They will change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit. Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live your uh, live as you were in ignorance and darkness? All hail the bucket. <laughs> Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Twenty-five buckets. The photographer experienced a catatonic shock for several weeks as a result of the euphoria from exposure to so many buckets at once. That's more than twenty-five. <laughs> Unless I like Photoshop copy and pasted it. Inferno bucket which in the medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died. And yet in spite of it, of it all, the simple fact remains, no one can control a bucket. <laughs> a bucket with two handles. Oh my god. Such a design has never been created in real life. Having been deemed too dangerous and Recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. <laughs> A stress bucket. Uh, the stress bucket. An analogy. Worrying, negative forecasting, thinking, lack of reassurance, coping strategies. Call equals calls. Uh. uh Vulnerability, strength and size of a bucket, rest and relaxation, doing something you enjoy, rest and relaxation. Stress equals water level of the bucket. The stress bucket, presented without commentary. <laughs> a cave drawing of the buckets. Oh. <clears throat> buckets predate the existence of man. We do not know how, by how long. The cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of the bucket, by which time uh, the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Noticing these drawings, how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. <laughs> what the hell? 
What is with no this game and buckets? No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. This piece symbolises the necessary relationship between bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance, inevitably, is for our own good. Are we going to have to jump in a hole? Oh! But there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let's stand down. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. Uh, I think we've died. Yep. <laughs> The buckets rule over us now. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes? Days? Centuries? Did something? A good bucket. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. <laughs> a bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had well, felt the bucket calling to him. It's finally him time, that the bucket. The employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Let's go on an adventure. <coughs> Stanley, I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. <laughs> you see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Right. Yes, yes, that's what Let's the fans take want. The bucket. Let's do it. <laughs> Whee! Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? <laughs> oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. <laughs> Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. <laughs> I think I'm ready to finally give up the bucket. <laughs> Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore okay, of the Stanley bucket. Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. It's been a good ride, Bucket. You'll truly be missed, but I now can't have you taking over the world. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the Bucket Destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Um, sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? 
Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you would see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like I can't 10 put the bucket personality in. traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? Uh, is that like no interact crouch simplify? Uh, but the broom closet certainly not. I wonder what sort of bucket destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the bucket destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the adventure line or the bucket destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do I it can't fans, do anything Stanley. with a bucket. The fans what they want. Hurry and well, I guess we're dead. <laughs> we cannot destroy the bucket. <laughs> We simply have to live bucket with the bucket destroyer. now. My prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvellous things with you. Tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squagnant now. <laughs> Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. And I think that is going to do it for now. Uh, we cannot get rid of the bucket. It's just here forever. Oh, is this... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. This is a different hallway, isn't it? Hmm. Right. I'll see you next time. We'll figure out what's going off here. I'll see you then.